Hi, welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some Am I the Whole stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I do my best to post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first Am I the Whole story. This says, Am I the a hole for refusing to eat all of my wife's food? Don't know what that means. Let's jump right in. So I, 37 male, and my wife, 35 female, are cooling down from an argument right now based around me telling her point blank to make less food in the future or I'm going to continue not eating it. Oh. Okay. The backstory is pretty simple and nothing to the point of threatening our marriage or anything. I'm getting up in years and as a basketball player and these knees are starting to go. I had eventually reached around 196 pounds or 89 kilograms at 176 centimeters, which is 5'9", around the tail end of COVID. I knew I had to make a change and at least get down to my pre-COVID weight of around 74 kilograms or 163 pounds. Now I'm actually actually all the way down to 70 kilograms. I'm happy with my progress and I'm set on making this my new normal moving forward until old age and beyond. But my wife isn't exactly thrilled I've shed all the weight. Strange. These aren't love handles. Oh, they're there aren't love handles for her to play with anymore. Most devastating for her is I don't eat nearly as much as I used to. We trade off cooking duties every day, and when it's me, I usually make just enough. But when she cooks, there is always enough food for another plate, full plate of food. My wife is tiny, so she can't eat it, and now I'm a dude who doesn't eat it either. I always say we can save it and have it for dinner the next day. Again, I don't eat breakfast and lunches are provided by my work. And while that worked for a while, eventually the leftovers just went in the bin and she'd asked me to cook something new instead. Although it's been fine, more or less, she doesn't hold back on commenting. To her, men should be eating seconds or thirds. It's just the Japanese way to her. She's Japanese and we live in the country. And she always recalled her father enthusiastically asking for seconds and thirds. She's feeling more and more ashamed that her husband doesn't like her cooking. Girl, this is 2024. And this is not your father. This is not your father's metabolism. And you need to not bring down the wrath of all your ancestors to this poor guy who just wants to stay fit and healthy. I mean, don't you want him to be healthier and live longer with you? Like, doesn't that... I, I, I understand, um, wanting your spouse to enjoy your meal. I am someone who has never enjoyed cooking, but now since my husband's been out of work and he's just doing, um, like Uber Eats and DoorDash and stuff and like delivery stuff, um, he's home. He makes sure he's home for dinner every single night. So I've been cooking every single night. Like we're talking like two months straight and we've ordered out maybe three or four times and like maybe three times and like two of those times were just because like we were craving hibachi takeout so like we just got it anyway i find that i get excited to like try a new recipe and see how my husband likes it because my husband like loves like a good meal but i just like i'm not like ooh, go back and get seconds and thirds like i'm just happy if he finishes his plate so I feel like she could like adjust her mindset and, 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 you know, these people who are like, well, that's how my mom and dad did it. Your mom and dad are different people from a different generation. You can't bring all of the lessons you learned from them into this relationship in this generation. That's my opinion. No, you're not the equal. I think y'all need to have more of a conversation. Maybe even go to therapy. Like this is not relationship ending. This shouldn't be a fight that y'all have about freaking dinner. Like it just needs to be clear communication from both sides so you can get your point across. And if she honestly will not like listen to your valid reasoning, I mean... Is she crazy? Like, did you marry a crazy lady? I, maybe it's time to think about that. <laughs> Let's see what Reddit has to say.
Not the a-hole you have spoken up about this plenty. At this point, she should need to eat any leftovers that she produces. Hopefully this isn't the case, but she may be subconsciously sabotaging her weight loss. That is a very good point. Maybe she liked him a little doughier. That's kind of gross though to sabotage your husband. OP responds and says, I don't think it's sabotage. It's not the type of person she is. She's just a bit set in her ways and expectations on what and how much I should eat. Though I gotta admit you planting that seed into my mind has me thinking, LOL. Boy, I hope that's not the case, but um, yeah, being set in your ways, like like I said, I think I think the perfect thing to say to her is, the things that your mom and your dad did in their generation, all those lessons you learned cannot all be transferred into this new relationship. Y'all are different people. He doesn't even seem like he's from your culture. So you have to do a little bit more compromising on that end because y'all are from different places that do things very differently. I say you're not the equal. I think you guys need to do more on the communicating side. And I would like to know what you think about that one. And let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the equal for telling my wife to go to a mental asylum after she asked my sister to dress modestly around me. Was that a roller coaster for y'all? Because I feel like it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Like, I told my wife to go to a mental asylum. Bad news, bro. Bad news, bro. Not going to end well for you. But she asked your sister to dress modestly around you. That's disgusting if my sister-in-law was like could you not have your boobs out around my husband i'd be like your husband used to punch me in the boob when we were kids like really like i'm not no like calm down uh, you're you're acting like you need to speak to somebody. Anyway, let's see what the story says. My wife, my sister, and I went on a one-week vacation last week. I had just gotten my bonus and wanted to use it on the vacation. I asked my sister if she wanted to join us because she was still really sad about breaking up with her fiancé who had cheated on her and wanted to get her mind off it. My sister was really excited about the trip. Our vacation was amazing. However, my wife and I did have a minor argument during the vacation. For the vacation, take a shot every time I say vacation. No, don't, you'll die. I had booked the two separate rooms at the hotel, one for my wife and I and one for my sister. I did give my sister our spare hotel room key and she was free to come in anytime she wanted. Every morning, my sister would come in to just hang out and talk with us as we planned the rest of the day. She usually wore an oversized shirt. However, a few days into our vacation, my sister spoke to me privately and told me my wife asked her to dress more modestly around me. Excuse me, him again? Que? Pourquoi? I'm getting angry just, just, just as an outsider. My sister seemed really sad and asked if she was intruding on our vacation. I was shocked and told my sister to relax and that I would speak to my wife about it. I spoke to my wife about it and we had a sort of a mini argument. My wife wasn't really close to her brother. In fact, she hated him. So she didn't understand how my sister and I could be so close and also dress so casually around each other. I told my wife we dressed casually around each other our whole life. I usually just wore shorts in the house growing up till I left for college. And I asked my wife what was so inappropriate about my sister wearing an oversized shirt. My wife asked why my sister wasn't at least wearing shorts and I then told my wife she had to go to a mental asylum and she was ruining the vacation with her crazy behavior sir it's like y'all were doing like 20 in a school zone and then you hit like the German autobahn and just called her crazy are you retelling this story appropriately because if you're like well why wasn't she just wearing shorts and you're like go to a mental hospital like just asking a question i mean she is acting crazy but i'm not sure i'm ready to like commit her for this just yet 
that was a bit harsh. Yeah. Uh huh. But what did, but that did put a stop to our argument. My wife, however, did seem somewhat sad, but she got over her sadness and the rest of our vacation went by smooth. Was I the a hole? I'm seeing a hundred thousand red flags. Ready? Let's start. First of all, your wife spoke to your sister instead of speaking to you. Second of all, y'all were, you were very, very worried about making sure that we all knew this was a very small fight. Like here, you call it, we had a sort of mini argument. Oh, was it a mini argument when you told her to go to a mental asylum because she was ruining your vacation with her crazy behavior? My darling, that is on a mini argument. If anybody in the entire universe told me to go to a mental asylum because I was ruining something with my crazy behavior, I would get a little bit crazier. <laughs> like that would not be a mini argument. That would be a nuclear argument. Okay. And then earlier in the story, he says, uh, our vacation was amazing. However, my wife and I did have a minor argument during the vacation. So he's like so downplaying it, but you told her to go to the crazy house because she's ruining your vacation. Senor, sir, monsieur, what are you thinking? Oh my gosh. Yeah, a bit harsh. Did she seem a bit sad? But she just like let you speak to her that way? Is this real? Are y'all have are y'all in a real marriage where you like actually like talk like when you like get in your room like at night and like nobody else around and you're like getting in your PJs like are, are y'all like are y'all talking about anything? Was I the a-hole? Um, yeah, uh-huh. See, like your wife was the a-hole, but then like how you responded, like just like, well, now he's the a-hole too. I think you're both the a-hole. I think the only one who's not the a-hole is the poor sister who's trying to live her life in a comfy t-shirt that she goes to bed in. Let's see what Reddit has to say. The bit that got me is the sister coming into their anytime she wanted. That's the part that would piss me off. OP, what exactly was your rationale for this? But... He didn't say wife is mad because my sister just pops into our room whenever she feels like it. It seems like the sister is very respectfully only coming in in the morning like, hey, good morning. What are we doing today? Like, let's have a cup of coffee and like, you know, figure out what we're doing. Like, that would be absolutely OK for any of my siblings or any of my sister. Do I have a brother-in-law? I don't have any brother-in-laws. Any of my took me a second any of my sister-in-laws I, I would 100% be happy to have them into my room in the morning like hey let's figure out what we're doing like that's not it's not like private time you're being weird next says yeah and I hope it was a third key a spare key in a hotel room what is it exactly is it a second key meant for his wife you need to calm down. It is very, very simple to get 17 key cards to your hotel room if you so prefer. In every hotel I stayed, you get as many cards or keys as the number of people staying in the room. False. So for me, if he gave the second key to his sister and not his wife, it's really disturbing. And if it was a third key and he gave it to his sister without consulting his wife, it's equally disturbing. You know what's disturbing? How fucking dumb you are. Sorry, y'all. I've been watching the Dad Challenge podcast and he's a snark channel. And I'm like, hmm, do I need to get, get a little meaner on my channel? I could, you know, I could get meaner. This person sounds really dumb. First of all, I worked in a hotel. Second of all, I've stayed in plenty and you can have as many keys as you want. I mean, like, obviously don't be ridiculous and be like, hi, I need 50 keys. But like, you could lose your key two, three, four times and like, no one is keeping track. You could just go to the front desk or or checking in. You could just be like, hey, can I have three keys? Really simple. I would have people be like, can I have three keys? Can I have four keys? Can I have one key? All the time. Not a big deal. I don't give a shit. Doesn't matter to me. Let's see what else. So if he gave the second key to his sister and not his wife, it's really disturbing. Okay. Um. I, yeah. But like, I, I don't know if he knew the type of people him and his wife are and that they're always going to be together 
Um, a lot of my clothing doesn't have pockets, especially if I'm on vacation and wearing dresses. We never get pockets in dresses. Very, very seldom. So I can imagine being like, oh, okay, well, my husband's gonna hold on to the key. And if I need the key, I'll just ask him for it. And then like run to the room, come back, give it to him because he has pockets. So yeah, it would be fine to give the sister the second key. Like, are you 13 and don't know how things work? <laughs> Lastly, if he gave it to his sister without consulting his wife, it's equally disturbing. Um. Pretty sure he doesn't need to fucking consult his wife on a goddamn vacation that A, he fucking paid for and B, is his goddamn sister. He doesn't need to consult her and he doesn't need to ask her permission. He should, however, mention it. Oh, hey, and I'm sure like that would have happened at the front desk as they were getting the keys. Like, wh why is this person, this dumb dumb, just assuming that it was like a clandestine meeting with the brother and the sister? Like, here, take my spare key. You can come in the room anytime. You're fucking weird, okay? You're really fucking weird for like the way that you're framing this. And like really pulling this out of the left field, in my opinion. This is, this is strange. Next comment says, your analysis of the keys is spot on. Have you noticed the OP has not responded? Oh my God, yari, yari, mari, yari. Um, you're dumb too. I'm irritated because these people don't know how anything works. Now, do I think that the husband and the wife, I told you, I already think they're both equals because the wife shouldn't have been weird about the sister and the husband shouldn't have said the mean things to her. Okay, but like y'all are like, oh, but the key, why did she give it? Why did he give her the key? Was it a secret? Did he give it to her on the slide? Did he give, did he give the sister the wife's key? <gasps> Does he prefer the sister to the wife? Y'all are fucking strange. Y'all are fucking weird. It's obvious you don't have healthy relationships with your siblings. And maybe you need to get off the internet and touch grass. I would like to know what you think about that one in the comments. And let's get on to the next story. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. I got a little... Like I said, I've been watching Dad Challenge podcast. If you don't watch him, you really should. I was questionable about how I felt about him at first, but the more I watch, the more I love. He literally makes me crack up laughing out loud. And I love what he stands for. He's calling out these family vloggers who are exploiting and making money off their children and setting their children up for a lifetime of everyone in the world being able to access their freaking baby pictures, their, uh, naked bath times, their freaking first periods, like the crazy things that family vloggers put on the freaking internet. Um, and he calls those people out and makes fun of them. And I think it's freaking hilarious and it's so snarky and it can be so mean, but it's like, would, would, would you tell someone they can't make fun of Jeffrey Dahmer? No, like, ew, your glasses are ugly. Like, who's gonna be like don't make fun of Jeffrey Dahmer like that's not fair to hurt his feelings no I mean these family vloggers are very clearly being called out they are very clearly being told hi it is pedos who are watching your children on these videos it is men who are subscribed to your channel watching your children and you know why and they continue to do it so you kind of get to the point where you deserve to be made fun of Anyway, I'm gonna step back off my soapbox. Yes, I'm being a little snappy today. If you don't like it, feel free to not watch me. It's really okay. I'm not gonna be offended. Anyway, let's for real get into the next story. This says, am I the able for baby talking my daughter? So you'd think, oh, you're baby me talking. Listen, I baby talk my baby because he's a baby, okay? I don't say everything in a baby tone and like, I don't know when or how or where, but like with my oldest, you just like get to the point where you like stop talking baby talk and it's like your uh, baby talk grows with them, you know? So like, yeah, when I'm talking to my baby, I'm like, oh, what a baby. Oh, what a little prince. It's the prince of the house. Oh, what a prince. Like, yeah, I'm going to talk to my baby, my baby like an idiot. However, how the F ever... <laughs> Let's get right into this story. It starts off with, I, 52 male, have a daughter, 18 female. Didn't I just tell you my speech, my baby talk, the way I talk to my child 
evolved as my child grew. So my child is five now and I basically speak to him like I would speak to anybody else except for the only difference is that when it's a concept that is hard for him to understand, I will break it down in easier words. Like I'll give you a great example. So when I was going through all this mental health mess last week, um, the day that I just cried and cried and cried, my son was obviously like, I mean, he wasn't like upset. He was, he was concerned. He was like, mom, why are you crying? Are you, are you hurt? And I was like, oh, baby, it's like my head. And he's like, oh, your head hurts. I can get you medicine because he knows when I have headaches, I'll take Excedrin or Motrin. And, and I go, no, babe, it's not, it's not that kind of head pain. And so I'm like, okay, get away from the head pain, get away from the head pain. Cause he's just going to think it's a headache. Cause he's had a headache before from like bobbing his head on things. So I'm like, how do you explain to a five-year-old that you're depressed and crying for no fucking reason? So I was like, you know what, baby, mommy's feelings are hurt. And he's like, your feelings? And I was like, yeah, mommy's feelings are hurt, but it's okay. Mommy is feeling better and she's going to get better. It's, it's okay. You don't have to worry about mommy. It's okay. And then he asked about my feelings a couple times that day. And I was thankfully able to tell him that I was feeling a little better, but back to the story. He's five. <laughs> This is an 18 year old woman and your baby talking to her. You're weird. Let's continue. Her name is Tina, who I love very much. I have many ways to show her my affection, but she seems to misinterpret a lot of them. Hasn't there been like smart professional people who have said that like, you can't just love someone the way you want to love them. You need to love them the way they want to be loved. I mean, there's probably a compromise somewhere between there, right? Anyway, I sometimes like to, in her words, baby talk her. For example, if I'm asking her to get me some juice, I'll say, Tina, can you pass me the juice juice? Repeating words for fun like that is just for fun. And she loved it and thought it was endearing when she was younger. Now that she's older, she doesn't like it as much. She just rolls her eyes or tells me to stop, but she's never stopped until now. When my brother had his first daughter, okay, they did this. Everything was juice juice, car car, dog dog, bro bro. Bro bro was the big one. She had a brother who was born a year after her. And yes, they're psychotic. Um, and still to this day, crazy people. Uh, and they had a, they had a son a year later and she always called him bro, bro. And everybody called him bro, bro. And so this poor little boy grew up thinking his name was bro, bro, but they did it to her too, because they always called her bean. And the doctor, when she was like a year old or, or nine months or whatever the appointment was, was like, Oh, is she responding to her name? And they're like, um, she thinks her name is bean. And the doctor's like, you should probably start calling her her real name. Which was a lesson that I always learned because we had little nicknames for our first son. And I'm like, call him his name, Heather, call him his name. But anyway, they called the second boy bro bro for so long that it took them until he was like three to get them to be like, hey, what's your name? And him not respond with bro bro and actually respond with his real name. But he was three. <laughs> I've been doing it more often because she's going off to college soon and I won't see her for a long time. So I'm trying to make the most of our time together. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. Let me translate that to you. I've been doing it more often because I'm so scared that my baby girl is becoming an adult and I am hanging on viciously to the last shreds of what I think is her childhood and trying to baby her like an infant instead of accepting that she is a grown woman who is growing up and becoming self-sufficient and responsible and doesn't want to pass you the juice juice. Got a lot spicy today. I don't know what's wrong, but enjoy or don't you know it is what it is i can tell she was getting more and more annoyed but never really thought that much of it until she ne thought of it since she never outright snapped until yesterday i was talking to her about groceries and the phrase that set her off was did you remember to get the snacky snacks i literally don't even talk like that to my five-year-old like my when bestie was here when she put him down for a nap she'd always call it a nappy and like 
I think that's cute for like a two-year-old, but like my five-year-old was saying it and it was honestly kind of cute when he was saying it, but like it's not something that I just routinely say. So like I forgot about it and now that she's moved out um, and away to Chicago and left me here alone, she, uh, he has stopped saying nappy, which is fine because, you know, he's five and he's growing up and shouldn't be saying things like snacky snacks or juice juice. Tina told me that she's told me so many times to stop and that she doesn't like when I talk like that. I told her it's just for fun. Let me translate that. I don't care how you feel because I like to do it. Did y'all hear that or was it just me? Okay. She told me that she's 18 and not eight. I apologized and told her I just thought it was cute. For an eight year old, not an 18 year old. Like really, how did you, how did you possibly get through 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 without her popping you in the nose for asking for some juice juice. She said, well, I don't, and said that if I keep talking like that, she's not going to talk to me anymore. Read it, am I the a-hole? Do we need to read the edits? I don't think we need to, but of course we're going to, but we all know the comments roasted him, right? Okay. Edit. Okay, I get it. I'm the a-hole. I will be apologizing to her tomorrow. She's asleep as I'm writing this. And I will no longer be talking to her like this. Thank you to everyone who called me out in a civil manner. Also, for the one person who PM'd me and accused me of sexualizing her. He's infantizing her and the fact that you find that sexual is a problem on you, random Reddit pm -er, you disgusting. The fact that your mind immediately went to that conclusion says a lot more about you than it does about me, a weirdo. Gotta agree, pops. Okay, we have one comment to read for this. That's all I saved. And it says, you're the ass holy hole. Even your daughter has told you it was cute when she was eight. I get it. You're facing empty nest syndrome, but that's on you and not your daughter. You ass holy hole. I mean, I don't think truer words have ever been spoken on this channel. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of like 360. 80 something am i the whole videos up here that you can binge please don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye